Ambassador, welcome to the program. Happy to be with you, Sarah. Now, back in February 2022, the world was absolutely stunned when Ukraine managed to push the invading Russian army back from Kiev. Two years on, is an actual defeat of the Russian army realistic? Well, for this past two years, we have demonstrated that we have been able to free 50% of the Russian territory of the territory that Russians have occupied originally. Also, we've been able to uh, inflict enormous damage to the aggressor, and uh, we've also been able to push Russians out from the Black Sea. So there does not need to be um, uh, any uh, third anniversary of the large-scale invasion. What we need uh, at this moment. Um, you know, to defeat Putin on behalf of the West and on behalf of Australia, we need to have the military support with, with concluding capacity. And uh, while we are grateful for the aid provided to date, Ukraine is requesting technology and tools to enable the end game. And the end game is a total defeat of the Russian troops on the ground. Now, you say on behalf of Australia and the West, do you think that Western countries, including Australia, really accept that this is a battle on their behalf rather than on the behalf of the Ukrainian people? Russia is demonstrating that they are, you know, have no limits. Uh, they have destroyed and undermined the entire rules-based international system, the system which Australia has helped to create and helped them to shape and uh, benefited a great deal for the past 80 years of, of, of the way that it all functioned. Russia has destroyed it all. More so, uh, if uh, their support for Ukraine, well, if the war drags on due to the lack of support uh, from the, and leadership from other countries, we'll, we'll see more pressure, we'll see more impact on the cost of living in, in Australia, higher prices for food, fuel, fertilizers, and, uh, and more instability here in the region. At the end of the day, uh, the best way, supporting Ukraine now, is the best way to, to avoid a, a larger war in Europe. Uh, but also avoid the chain reaction of other interstate wars around the world, including here in this region. So whatever the cost may be, the cost of dealing with the crisis afterwards will be significantly higher. Now, you, you mentioned the fact that you'd had some significant victories and, and you referred to the uh, victory against the Black Sea fleet, which, what, which has been a, a, an astonishing success for Ukraine, a country without a navy. At the same time, you have suffered defeats, including one last week where the Russians took a strategic city. We also know that Russia is rebuilding its army at a pace that surprises observers. How much do you need to increase the amount of military aid and support and equipment that you are getting from the West compared to where you are now? Oh, it definitely needs to be stepped up. And of course, a lot will depend on how the situation will be resolved in the US Congress. However, we are also asking our partners in Europe and around the world who have been out there supporting us to step up that support. And I think a lot will depend on that. I think from the very beginning, Putin has not only underestimated the resilience of the Ukrainian people, he also underestimated the resilience of the, uh, of the international coalition of countries. At the end of the day, to win the war, we need stamina and we need military support. We've got the stamina, but we need your support to continue. At the end of the day, uh, helping Ukraine is not an, uh, a donation. It's an investment into your own security, into the security in the region. So at the end of the day, we want to have the same life as you do here in Australia. We want to take our kids out to the forest nearby, but we cannot do it because the forest is mined. We want to uh, read a book to offer our kids in the evening. Instead, we have to run to, into the cold uh, basement. Our farmers want to harvest their yield and get a good price for what the hard work they've done. Now they, they barely can make their ends meet because the prices domestically have been suppressed because of the disrupted logistics. So other farmers want to have the same life as your farmers. And, and we are just striving to get the justice. And I think justice is very important in this particular case. We definitely see that for Russia, it's nothing about neutrality. It's not about protecting Russian speakers. It's not even about NATO expansion. It's about an imperialistic conquest. It's about annihilating an independent the nation and undermining global security by changing borders in Europe. All right. Well, tell me, what is it that the Ukrainian government wants from Australia right now? 
I think it does, it, it, we don't really have to go into those details. Generally, if you look at what Ukraine needs from all our partners, it includes modern aircraft, air defense system, electronic warfare, armored uh, personnel carriers. It also includes ammunition. I ammunition mean, is in a huge need, artillery guns. So there is a big range of products, and Australian government has all the lists that Ukraine needs, and we are really hoping to work much closer with Australia on these issues. I think Australia, as a 12th largest economy in the world, is also having a budget which is benefiting from additional revenue from commodities and during the war. I mean, that's basically a direct result of this war. The prices for commodities have surged. They can make a decisive difference towards ending this war. And this is, you know, we're not asking you to fight, you know, to, to, to send boots um, on the ground. We are asking you to help us defend ourselves, to help us defend all of us. Because I think whatever will happen, it will fail. It will be much, much more expensive and it will cost more. Let's just understand a little bit about the ask, though, to the Australian government. Um, just in terms of the larger equipment, is the Ukrainian government, is the Ministry of Defence asking Australia to commit to sending its uh, tanks, the M1 Abrams tanks that are going to be decommissioned next year? It, I can confirm that there is an interest in those tanks and, um, of course, it would involve also the U.S. government in this and we will be uh, welcoming a conversation and, and will continue doing so. Uh, armored personnel carriers, I mean, the, the protected vehicles, Bushmasters, have been very ex ex effective. They've been saving many lives in Ukraine. Uh, also, the artillery that's been used, drones uh, to a large number, as we've seen, this war is changing and the use of drones is, 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 is way different from what it used to be. So, therefore, we need to have the technological edge. Uh, therefore, we are hoping to get it and, and, and from our partners, also develop it ourselves. We're encouraging more cooperation among our de defense industries. And uh, we, we, we're just ramping up whatever the production we have, but we're asking our partners to also beef up their production capacity in order to be able to withstand this brutal attack on the international uh, order. Has, has a request for those Abrams tanks actually been delivered to the Albanese government? Uh, th this, uh, I mean, th there were discussions about this seven months ago, and there is a general request. There was a request made to join the tank coalition, uh, which has been done um, in, within the Ramstein group, where, which um, Australia has been part of. And uh, the, the, the request to consider providing tanks was provided previously, so we can we can say that it was out there. And uh, but of course, I mean, it's not you know necessarily about this capability. There are many other like. There are many things which defense industry in Australia is producing that could be very handy on the battlefield. And there are remote weapon systems, there are drones, there are some telecommunications equipment. Uh, there are also some very sophisticated um, uh, platforms which are being created here to deal with those drones, to counter those drones and others, right? And I, I just wanted to ask, because there was a, a request that was rejected, that is to supply um, being decommissioned Taipan helicopters. How would Ukraine react to a second rejection rejection of a request for a particular type of material from Australia? Well, it's still, I, I recognise it's still up to the government to decide what they can provide and how they can uh, do it. Uh, we, are we are very grateful for all the assistance that's been uh, provided so far. We will never forget Australia. And I think it's, it's uh, out there in the interests of Australia to make sure that we can win. Uh, Ambassador, thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thanks for having me.